Alright, this is lesson 8.2, solving absolute value equations. In our previous lesson, lesson 8.1, we looked at uh, absolute value functions and their graphs. Um, this time, of course, we're going to look at how, how we can solve um, these equations. So here we go. We can solve absolute value equations by graphing using the strategies learned in lesson 8.1, or we can solve using algebra. So the first couple examples you're going to see me go through is I'm just going to use a lot of the uh, the graphing uh, principles that we learned in the previous lesson, and then uh, we'll try it algebraically. Okay. So uh, the first example we're going to solve um, uh, graphically. It says solve by graphing, then verify the solution of the absolute value of 3x minus 6 is equal to 6. So whenever you see something like this, I want you to think of this as being one function and this as being another function. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look for where the graph intersects. So I'll get you to make a note of that. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to graph. Pretend like each one of those equations that I circled is y equals. So I want you to graph the equation y equals 6. Okay, so that's this one over here. And y equals the absolute value of 3x minus 6, like so. So let's start with that. First thing I'm going to do is in, um, let's do red for y equals 6. So I go up here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right, so if you remember, um, when we just have a line that's y equals, that's going to be a horizontal line. It basically means the y-intercept is 6, and we have a uh, slope that's 0. So we will get a straight line that goes just across like so. Okay, and maybe in green here, I will graph the, uh, the graph of the absolute value of 3x minus 6. Okay? And so for this one, if you recall, you graph it just like it's a linear function, but don't go um, below the x-axis. So I see I have a, um, a y-intercept that's at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 right here, and a slope that's 3. So I'll keep going like so. And just recall that this is going to go all the way down until you get to the x-axis, and then these points are just going to be reflected above. So we're going to have this point right here, this point right here, and this point right here. So that would be what the absolute value of 3x minus 6 is. Okay, so that's just calling what we learned um, in, our, in the previous section. And so then to answer this, all you do is you just figure out where these two uh, ordered pairs are. Right? We want to know what the x-coordinates are that make that happen. Where do they intersect at? All right, so the second thing, uh, maybe know what I'll draw right here, is that we want to look for where the graph intersects. Oops. All right, and so where do we see the intersects? Well, it intersects right here when x is equal to 0. That would be one of your solutions. And when x is equal to, it looks like it's at 1, 2, 3, 4, when x is equal to 4. Okay. So those would be your two solutions. Uh, if you want, what you can do at the end here, uh, the beautiful thing about this stuff is you can do a check. So what I mean here is if you substitute in 0, so let's do that one first, you would have 3 times 0 minus 6. The absolute value of that is equal to 6. Well, if you take a look, 3 times 0 is 0 minus 6. So we'd have the absolute value of negative 6. But when we take the absolute value of a negative, right, it becomes positive, and we get 6 equals 6. That's a good thing. Let's check the next one. We put in a 4. We have 3 times 4 minus 6, the absolute value of that is equal to 6. This gives you 12 minus 6. And of course, the absolute value of 6 is just 6. So we are very confident that those are your solutions. Okay. So I'd get you to maybe try this next one on your own here, example 2. Um, you should be OK with how to graph these. So in red, I'm going to graph y equals 3. And in green for this one, I'll graph um, y is equal to the absolute value of 3x squared minus 3, like so. So the graph of y equals 3, again, is a horizontal line right here with a y-intercept at 3. All right, and the graph of the absolute value of 3x squared minus 3. That one, of course, has a y-intercept at 1, 2, 3 down here. All right, and the graph is going to open upwards because the leading coefficient is positive. So we go over 1, up 1 normally, but this one has a 3, so it's over 1, up 3, like so. The next graph is normally over 2, up 4, but this one has a 3 in front, so it's going to be up 12. So we go over right to here and up to this point right there and this point right there. Well, you notice how this point is 3 below the, um, the x-axis, so we're going to have to reflect that. 
And so that one will hit then right here, three units above. We get this graph that we dealt with um, before that was kind of a W looking shape, like so. Okay, and of course, what are we looking for? We're looking for where this graph intersects. All right. Now, what's interesting about this one is it's very tough to see by graphing what that point is, and that's one of the negatives about graphing is it's tough to be accurate. So we're just going to estimate what that one is and what um, this one is. So one and two, we can be pretty sure that this one intersects when x is equal to zero. So uh, my solutions here. Your solution would be we have a solution when x is equal to zero. That's the easy one that we know for sure at that point. These two over there, I would look and I would see it looks maybe a little bit less than 1.5. So I'd say when x is equal to uh, approximately, that's what that little dot represents, negative 1.4. And when x is equal to approximately 1.4. Now, what's interesting about this one is you could go and put in the x equals 0 to do a check, and that would end up being correct. Okay, I'm just going to leave that out for this uh, example. But if you put in the negative 1.4 and the positive 1.4, my guess is you'll see that those are not quite accurate. But um, what I would want you to do is I just want you to, uh, to estimate. And so the question says, where necessary, give the solutions to the nearest tenth. Uh, if there's no solutions, explain why. Well, we do have solutions, so we don't need to worry about that. Um, and we round it to the nearest tenth. So that's example two. Let's uh, flip over to the next page. Okay, another one to give uh, a try here. We have the absolute value of 2x squared plus 4x minus 1 is equal to negative 2. Well, it's easy to graph this guy right here. Maybe I'll just pop right there. This is just y equals negative 2. So in red, I'm going to go and I'll deal with that. That is a horizontal line at negative 2. Okay. But this one that I'll do over here in green, all right, we have some problems, right? Because what I notice is that uh, this is um, not in the form that we want to, right? We want to put it in y equals a onto x minus p all squared plus q because that makes it easy to graph, right? So I will start with this. We have y is equal to the absolute value of 2x squared plus 4x minus 1, all right? And we're going to need to change formats right here. So we get y is equal to, I factor out a 2 from the first two terms. All right, the next thing that I will do is I will take this middle term, the 2x, I divide it by 2, and I square it. All right, the next thing that I will do is I will take this middle term, the 2x, I will divide it by 2 and square it, so we get plus 1, minus 1, minus 1, all in the absolute values. And lastly, completing the square right here, we have 2x plus 1 all squared minus 1, the absolute value of that. Okay, And so I'd like you to go ahead and try and graph this one. So this one, of course, we would go in the negative direction. So that's what this part tells you right here. Go in the negative direction 1. So that would get me right to here. And then we're going to go down 1. That's what this part right here will tell you. So that tells you where your, inter or sorry, where your uh, vertex is going to be. And so you can draw your dot to start right here. All right, and then from there, it has a, um, a stretch factor of 2 right here. So the graph, instead of going over 1, up 1, it's going to be over 1, up 2, and 2. And then over 2, normally it's up 4. This one will be up 8. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, like so. And those are the only points that you can fit on the graph. OK, so we have to be careful about this point right here. Since it's at negative 1, we'd have to reflect it. Right, so when we reflect it, it would be at this point right here. And so then what you'll see happens is that this graph would come down here. It would get infinitely close to the x-axis. Then it would bounce and make the w like we see, kind of like so. Okay. Now, recall what we're trying to do, right? We're trying to see where um, this graph intersects with that graph. Well, what do you see right here? We see that it does not intersect, right? So what can we say? Well, the graphs do not intersect. So there is no solutions. All right. And in general, we can say that this will happen when the absolute value of the function that we have right here is less than 0. So as soon as I saw that this was equal to a negative 2 right there, I knew we were going to be into some uh, some problems here, or that there was not going to be any solutions. Okay. Uh, next, what do I have for you? Well, 
we can have a different amount of solutions depending on what uh, type of um, absolute value equation we have here. So an absolute value equation of the form, the absolute value of ax squared plus bx plus c equals d can have 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4 different solutions. The number of solutions depends on the absolute value of the function graph and the value of d. So the d is that number that we have on the outside there, right? So let's take a look. I'm going to uh, get your attention on the uh, the left side here at this graph. So notice, let's start here at zero solutions. We kind of just dealt with one, right? So let's take, this is the function. I just kind of am highlighting here in red. And we're going to look at these various lines. So notice that when I have a line way down here, we have zero solutions. Okay. When I have a line right here, this is an example of two solutions. It hits at once, twice. I can have exa uh, an example of four solutions at this line where it hits once, twice, three, and four times. Or I can have three solutions, right, where it hits just once there and then these two. Okay. And the other scenario that we have is this one on the other side. How can we get one solution? Well, that's just where we have a parabola and it just bounces off this line, right? So we would say that it just meets once at that point. Okay. So uh, on to the next page, what we're going to do is it says uh, one of the problems with solving uh, problems by graphing is that the solutions are often approximate. If you remember what we did in that uh, the first example, on example, uh, I think it was number two, uh, we had to say that x was equal to approximately uh, 1.4. And so what we can do if we want to get exact solutions is we can sometimes use algebra. All right. So I'd like you to uh, flip to the next page and we'll complete those last examples. Example 3 here says um, solving y is equal to the absolute value of f of x algebraically for a linear f of x. So when you take one of these, what I want you to do is you're always going to take what is in the absolute value and use it to define your cases. All right, so what I mean is I'm going to take the absolute value of 4x plus 6, and that's going to make my cases, because depending on what I have in the absolute value, that's going to change what uh, you could have as a possible answer for this question. Case number one. And we'll set up case number two over here. So case number one, I take what's in my absolute values, and I'm going to look for what happens when there's positive, a positive resultant from your absolute value. So when you solve for this, you get 4x is greater than or equal to negative 6, or x is greater than or equal to uh, negative 6 over 4, which reduces to be negative 3 over 2. So that's just your restriction right there. I'm going to circle that one. For the next case, all you do is you take the exact same thing, the 4x plus 6, and we're looking what happens when the resultant from your absolute value is less than 0. So we'd have 4x is less than negative 6, or x is less than negative 3 over 2. So those are your restrictions. In the next step right here, what we're going to do is we'll solve this, and we're going to have to see if it passes your restrictions. Okay? So in the first case always, since we're dealing with positive values, all you need to do is take whatever you have in your absolute value up here. And I'm going to go and I'm going to get rid of the absolute value signs. So to do this, I just will have x plus 8 is equal to the absolute value of 4x plus 6. Gathering my like terms, I gather my x's. I have a 3x over here. Moving the 6 to the other side, I have a 2. And uh, solving for x, you'll see that we get x is equal to 2 thirds. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do at this stage is I'm going to check this against that restriction. Is 2 thirds greater than a negative 3 over 2? It is. So that passes that restriction. Let's go to the next side. So I'll take my absolute value this time, I'll get rid of it, but since I'm looking for the negative values, I'm going to put a negative in front of it and then solve. So when you distribute the negative across, we end up getting a negative 4x minus 6. All right, and then from here, I'm going to gather my like terms. This time I'll move the x to the other side, so I have 5x is equal to negative 14, and we end up getting x is equal to negative 14 over 5. Okay. So checking here, we'd see, is negative 14 over 5 less than this negative 3 over 2? It turns out it is. It passes both of the restrictions, so those would be both good answers. All right. So what does that mean? Well, that means that that is where this graph right up here and that graph right there would intersect. And you can imagine it would be very tough for us to go and find where that happened um, just by graphing. Right? It's very tough to see what those uh, points would be just with the naked eye. So example four here, solve algebraically, and notice that I changed this question a little bit. I have the absolute value of x squared minus 6x plus 5 is equal to 5. First thing I'll start off with again is my cases. So case number one right here. 
I'm looking for what happens when whatever's in the absolute value sign is a greater than or equal to zero. Basically, when is it positive? So for this one, I'm going to take x squared minus 6x plus 5. 